Hello and welcome to the Arcade Saga. My name is Ilkion Riesma, also known as EJ. So yes, I did uh, get this nice request from uh, Mary G. Arcades and more about uh, this uh, Dendrobium Spectabile cross that I have. She saw this uh, uh, beautiful uh, orchids in full bloom in my video on uh, getting a new uh, uh, greenhouse floor. And she asked me basically, uh, can you do a spotlight video on it or a bit of a care guide? Uh, like uh, like I uh, try uh, to do today, so I said yes, of course I can do that. Um, I really like this this type of uh, video. So if you have any requests, please let me know in a, in the comment section below, and I will see what I can do. But yeah, this is a cross. It's not the Dendrobium spectabile on its own, but it's a cross with the microfilm, I believe. Let me quickly spec. Yes, microfilm. So that is uh, what this one is. And it's absolutely beautiful. So I will give you some shots of the blooms because some uh, orchid growers like to refer to this plant as the uh, more alien plant <laughs> because of the shape of the blooms. And uh, yeah, for me, they I, I don't see the alien part in it, but I do get that these are a little bit different, uh, maybe a bit unusual. Uh, on the other hand, if you go into the orchid world, there are a lot of different sort and types of blooms with different shapes. So anyhow, but this one has a very beautiful one, a very curly one. It, go, it goes basically in, in different kind of directions and it, uh, it is a, a bit of an odd one. Yes, that, that's true. But I chose for this cross because the Spectabile itself, the pure form, uh, the pure species is, uh, is, is uh, not that easy to find. Uh, if you can find it, it's most of the times a very small uh, plant, seedling size. And I saw this one for sale. I'm not remembering where, but somewhere. And I saw it had the spectabile in it. And that the blooms are very similar to the original species. So I thought I'm going to buy this one so I can start this off with a uh, bigger plant from the start anyways. To get uh, these beautiful blooms a, 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 bit, a bit easier, a bit quicker, I, sh uh, I should say. So, and that happens. It's uh, blooming for at least the second time, probably the third time uh, for me. I did uh, report this one in 2021, so I almost have it three years now. And uh, it grew these uh, bigger canes last season. So, yeah, uh, care wise, you can say that first of all, uh, this one uh, really likes the a bit warmer temperatures, so intermediates up to warm temperatures, and it enjoys, on my experience. Uh, uh, because I can see that uh, uh, I do grow this in a semi-hydroponic setup, obviously, but uh, I can see that in, in winter where the temperatures drop, this really doesn't like it. So the, the bit of colder water in the reservoir, it really uh, doesn't like it and it, it starts to uh, drop the roots and I start to get a root, uh, a rot if I don't uh, uh, think about it. So that's what happened uh, the first time, the first winter that I have it. Now I just, um, I have it in a, uh, a self-watering pot. So I have not the actual pot of media sitting in the water, which I have with some markets, some setups, but in this case, it's a more self-watering uh, setup. So the actual pot is hanging above the reservoir. Thereby it has more air around the roots and it doesn't cool down as much as when it would sit in the water, because the water is getting colder. So if I have 18 degrees at night, which I have in my greenhouse, the actual reservoirs can go even uh, down to 15, uh, especially in winter on the really cold days. And then this one starts telling you that it really doesn't like it. So it starts dropping those roots. And then uh, you get the shriveling on the canes, etc. The designs that it really uh, doesn't enjoy it. So to compensate it a little bit, I put it up, I put it a little bit higher, and um, I do not use them, the, the heating mats, the grow mats, but if you have a heating mat, uh, this one uh, probably will enjoy it. So it, it has a little bit of a higher temperature uh, during winter in that reservoir. So that is what I, uh, first off, a big tip on this one, uh, because it's just a bit more sensitive to the, to the cold. Uh, also, I want to mention with all my orchids, I just uh, fertilize them weekly, weekly. So, so little amounts of fertilizer. And that is because I like to think of my uh, reservoir. Let's uh, grab the pot so you can see it a bit better. So yeah, we have a bit of a reservoir down here. Let me, uh, it's a very big pot. 
here we go. So this, if it's full, it's on about this level of water inside of the pot. And I can see that, I can check that on this water meter. And this red bit sticking out uh, gives me a indication of the amount of water down in the pot, which is very easy. So yeah, I, I really use, uh, like to use these water meters, like I uh, like to call them. But anyhow, weekly, weekly, I like to uh, think of this as a, a sort of buffet for my plants. So I try to get everything in there that the plants might need. And uh, watch the pH. Of course, with, uh, with a uh, suitable pH, they can take out what they need out of this water. So therefore, I do not high amounts because I never know for sure, obviously, uh, what these orchids need and in which time. Or at which time, I should say. So yes, I know, we, sometimes we have darker spots on the end of the leaves, on new growth. Most of the times it's because of a calcium deficiency. Uh, we can have magnesium deficiency, can have different signs, I should say. But um, I, I, we never are 100% sure what plants need. So therefore, I like to play it on the safe side and just give them basically everything that they need without burning the roots. So I keep it low. That is uh, what I, uh, I like to do. So in winter, that means it's the period parts per million will be around 40, something like 40. Sometimes it's a bit lower, sometimes a little bit higher. And in summer, it's around 80. So it may go over 100 sometimes, but not often. I'm not aiming for a more fertilizer. Once again, weekly, weekly, because I, I am a strong believer of that the plants need to have the ability to uptake what they are, what they need at that certain point, if that does make sense. I think it does, if you remember that I have a lot of plants and I cannot water every single one uh, based on their needs, if, if we really even can be sure. So um, yeah, that's why I keep it uh, fairly low inside of that reservoir with a nice pH. And as we probably saw, but I uh, have this one in a net pot, because I had some a root uh, drop, some root rot, like we just discussed. So I thought I'm going to do it in a net pot, but still, because this net pot is really falling in the outer pot, it sort of seals it. So I could do with a bit of more air going in into this pot. Overall, it's doing well, I know, but I always like to look at how to get the best potential out of the plants. Talking about the blooms, this one uh, definitely has a fragrance. It's uh, a honey type fragrance, which does remind me of my berry oda. So if you have the Denbrowium berry oda, this is similar, but it's a bit softer. So it's not as strong. The berry oda can be very strong and very overpowering, especially if you put your nose in it. This one doesn't, but it has a very similar fragrance. So that is uh, about uh, the, the blooms and the fragrance. Let's talk about the light levels. So yeah, if you're going to talk about the light levels, I'm going to take you into the greenhouse because that is where I grow this one. It's currently standing on this uh, little side table here because of the display. And it's so beautiful and has just a little bit more room to uh, show us those beautiful uh, flowers. But normally it sits over here on this shelf or that one. I think it's this one because of the height. This uh, dendrobium will go up. But yeah, it's currently, well, it's not currently, but if it sits there, it's uh, very close to this uh, LED lamp, which I use uh, in uh, fall and winter, because then we have these uh, not so nice, dull, <laughs> gray days. And then this, this uh, greenhouse is southwest facing. So on, let's say, in the middle of the afternoon until into the evening, depends on which time, of course, of the season. But in summer, it will get quite some light, a little less of my Catalea types who are there in the back in my vendas, but still quite some light. So if you ask me, yeah, it definitely, uh, definitely likes the, the warmth and the light. Yes, it's definitely is honey. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance to this one. Absolutely. It's not overpowering. It will not fill up a room, I think. That's something harsh, sometimes hard to tell because I, uh, I have at the moment also quite some uh, plants flowering with their fragrance and those are a little bit stronger. Yeah, maybe, yeah, I think you will, uh, will, uh, will smell it if you have it in, inside of your home. So it's not strong, but uh, strong enough to uh, 
really recognize it. And as you can see, it's a fairly nice uh, size plant. And these are the older canes, the smaller ones. So that's why, uh, like I earlier said, I bought it so I would have a uh, nicer, nicer a bit of older plant to start with because of the balloons. Anyhow, Mary, thank you so much for your request. If you're watching this video and you have some questions or also a request, please leave them in the comment section below. I really enjoy making those videos and I really like to know what you guys think of these types of videos. So please let me know. And uh, of course, if you like, give this a, uh, a thumbs up. Maybe you want to share it, which is great for my channel, if you share the videos. And of course, if you didn't already have, you might consider subscribing to my channel, which is also very beneficial. And for now, just thank you for watching, and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.